So is your net margins for your e-commerce business less than 30%? Well, if so, listen up. So in this video, I'm going to show you the missing factor that you are missing in your e-commerce business that will help you increase your net margins. So unless you want to be making between 15 to 20% net from your e-commerce business, then I highly recommend you stick around for what I'm about to say. So first things first, before we can even start thinking about increasing your bottom line, you need to first of all know your numbers. Yes, I know it's probably cringe and you kind of, not cringe, but you've heard it a thousand times before, but the power in knowing your numbers is such that when you look at the line items at the end of the month, you'll know exactly where to cut back to actually boost those margins. So in order to do that, I've actually created a spreadsheet that I've shared in our private Facebook community. So if you want access to that, links down below. This sheet will help you assess your monthly expenses from a percentage perspective and also give you monthly target KPIs that we try to get our partners to hit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to a screen share and I'll show you exactly what the sheet looks like and how to actually work through it for your business. So this sheet basically allows you to break down your monthly expenses by the various categories and where this example from it's to be honest it's just a uh, demo example that's why I put the monthly revenue at hundred thousand dollars just for the ease of maths but generally speaking we have some KPIs that we try to get our clients to hit so when we were doing Facebook ads one of our requirements was that the cost of goods sold be less than 25% the reason for this is that gives us ample room in terms of cost per acquisitions to actually scale the account. So this, these are the KPIs that we try to get our founders to hit to allow them to maintain a net profit margin of between 25 to kind of 35%. Now average though, this is kind of aspirational. What's more common is net margin of anywhere from 15 to kind of the 30% range. However, to hit that, you need to make sure that, you know, your cost of goods sold isn't too high. For example, you know, if your cost of goods sold is at like 50%, then just say goodbye to your margins. Like there's going to be very, very slim margins on that. In terms of shipping and fulfillment, depending on the niche, it might be cheaper to store certain items versus others. That's why we always try to aim for less than 10% with our founders. However, we have seen that go up to kind of like the 10 to 15 range, just depends on the niche. Refunds and merchant fees, this is where we're really strict with it. So we always get our founders to get the refunds less than 2%. And the way you would do that is the product quality needs to be there. And also you need to be delivering and shipping the products in a timely manner. With merchant fees, there's literally nothing you can do about this. This is basically just, you know, your PayPal and Stripe process fees however here's a little bonus hack if you're processing over like half a million in a year with stripe you can actually negotiate discounts with the fees so for example you can easily get a 30 to kind of like 50 percent discount on stripe if you're bringing enough business on a yearly basis because you're a very valuable customer to them. In terms of third-party service providers, that would be things like agencies or freelancers that you're working with. That along with employee payroll is something that you could play with. You could either take it in-house and try to lower your costs that way, or maybe you can kind of just do more things yourself within the business. Either ways, you can kind of work to lower the cost of this. And sales tax, I've just kind of included in this because I know, for example, in the UK, if you're trading at above 85K in the last 12 months, then you'll need to start charging things like VAT, which is what I'm having to do now with my agency. And I know in the US, it just gets way more complicated with like, um, state tax and federal tax and all this other crap, I think, don't quote me on it. So I've just kind of bracketed it under sales tax as a whole. So as a whole, sales tax should be around 10%, maybe higher, maybe lower, just kind of depends on where you are geographically. So for software, there's no reason why it should ever be over 1%, simply because if you're spending 10% on software, then you're clearly doing something wrong, you know? Um, so yeah, in terms of ad spend, we want to keep this at under 20%. However, for example, if you're growth maximizing, then it's definitely advisable to spend over 20%. However, if you're in a phase where, you know, you're trying to increase your profit margins, that's why you're probably watching this video, then we highly recommend you spend less than 20% on ads to maintain a net profit margin of anywhere between kind of like 25 to 35%. This is aspirational. Don't get me wrong, like most e-commerce stores are unable to achieve this simply because of things like cost of goods sold and also they don't have complete kind of market resonance. 
So typically we'll be looking at anywhere from kind of 15 to 30%, but where you wanna be is definitely in the sweet spot of between 20 to 30% net profit. The thing is, when we get our founders to go through this sheet, what they find is, yes, they can cut back like a few thousand here and there. However, ultimately it doesn't really make a huge dent on their net margins. So what do you actually need to do? Well, you need to find a way to sell more without raising the variable costs, such as things like ad spend, employee payroll, and third party service providers. So just imagine if we're able to routinely add an additional 20% of monthly recurring revenue to your business. So instead of generating $100,000 a month, you're generating $120,000 a month with zero additional ad spend. See what it does to your net margins. Well, you start off with having a 14% net margin and that gets bumped up all the way to 20%. Yes, a 6% increase might not seem like a huge deal. However, if you look at the increase in net profits, it went from 14,000 a month to 24,000 a month, which is a 71% increase. Now, let's say we were able to add an additional 30%, which, you know, it's not impossible. Like we've literally added up to 48% from emails alone before for clients. So you're generating $130,000 a month and your dollar net profit actually just over doubles. So as you can see, a small bump in your net margins could actually lead to a huge increase in your net profit. Now you're probably thinking, and I know, you know, Boyan, you're chatting because this example isn't realistic at all because if I'm watching this video, I'm probably already doing email marketing for my store anyways, right? Yeah, you'd be correct. So let's assume, you know, you're already generating uh, 15% through email marketing already. So let's say we were only able to add another 15% through emails for your store. That's still an additional 53% increase in your overall profit and it also is a 4.7% increase in your net margin, so around the 5% mark. And to be honest, typically the clients that we sign are doing anywhere from kind of three to 8% with their emails as opposed to the 15 mark, because to be honest, at the 15 mark, you're probably working with another agency that's doing somewhat of a sloppy job and you're just kind of happy with it because the general consensus with emails is it's something that you just kind of have on in the background and you can take what you can from it. So yeah, very short run over. Worst case, you know, we add an additional 15% through emails. Best case, we're able to generate you an additional 30 to 40%. So in my opinion, it's worth the risk. At least book in a call with me if you need help with your email marketing and back to the talking head. You see, by easily bumping your net margins by that tiny amount, you actually effectively double your net profits at the end of the month. And honestly, this is why I chose to pivot my agency into a email marketing focused agency as that's where we were able to to consistently bring our clients the highest ROI. So if you're an e-com owner watching this, I really hope I've conveyed the importance of email marketing to your business and why if you're generating less than 15 to 20% minimum from your emails, you're just simply doing it wrong. Now, if you want some training and guidance on how to actually get this done, I made a video last week detailing exactly how to set up your Klaviyo account step-by-step -step for success. Down below, it's very detailed. I show you how to split test the various variables and what kind of metrics to be looking out for and things of that nature. Uh, so links down below if you want to check that out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you want my agency to help you with your email marketing, book in a call with me down below and we'll talk more.